Sin, loneliness, despair, is there hope for me? Bonne, Abemubio, Akotia, Contecro, Anconam, and it has to be all. There are many people in our world tonight who are hopeless. And if I pray, how many any does so? And I agree, you hear more. As a matter of fact, there are many people who are, who are lonely. They are also people who are in despair. They just don't know what to do. Tonight, it is my intention to bring some hope if you are in that category. I will assume ever. Or even give you some words to help someone who might be in that category. You know, the world began very beautifully. God created Adam and Eve in the garden, and He made the Garden of Eden and all the animals, and everything was peaceful and beautiful. When you look at the Garden of Eden and how God made everything beautiful and sweet, and then you look at what our world has become, you recognize that there is something radically wrong with this world. This world is filled with diseases, sickness, robberies, rapes, crimes, and you can name all the bad things. The problem in our world is that we are disconnected from God. You see, when God created the world and made Adam and Eve and all creation, we were connected to God. But the moment sin entered into our world, we become disconnected with God. So Genesis teaches us of a God, or the early chapters 1 and 2 of Genesis, teach us of a God who we were connected to. God made everything beautiful in our world. If you think that things are beautiful now in some places, maybe if you think about probably the Niagara Falls or you think about the Angel Falls or you think about some beautiful part of Africa, well, you need to think again because then it was real beauty. But you see, things did not last very long. Eve decided to listen to the devil and she ate the fruit that God said she should not eat. And from the time she picked that fruit and ate it and gave to her husband Adam to eat, sin entered into the world. And when sin entered into the world, fear came. Anxiety came. Insecurity came. Guilt came. Emptiness came. Loneliness came. And this world became a planet in rebellion. A planet running away from God. A planet filled with sin and destruction. A place where evil dwells and lurks in every corner and every cranny and every nook. The Bible tells us 
but your iniquities or sins have separated you from your God. The first thing I want you to understand tonight, friends, is that sin separates from God. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they could not, that relationship with God was broken. They could not stay in the presence of God. They were separated from God and separated from their home. And the problem is still today that sin separates us from God. How does this separation from God affect us? Well, first of all, it affected Adam and Eve in the garden by separating that by separating themselves from God in a broken relationship. They experience, as it were, a broken relationship with God when they sin. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8 states that they heard the voice of God in the garden and they hid themselves from God. They separated themselves from God. Secondly, they became separated from each other. They began to blame each other. Adam said it was the woman God that you gave me that caused me to sin. The woman said, well, you know, it's a serpent. And poor serpent had nowhere to go but to the dust. That was the curse that God pronounced upon the serpent that he would eat dust all the days of his life. That separation was soon experienced as Cain killed Abel. And ever since, there is that separation in humanity between us and God and between us and our brothers and our sisters. The destruction of sin was not only between us and God and us and ourselves and our brothers and our sisters, but it was between the environment also. Suddenly, leaves began to, to, to wither. Leaves began to drop. Flowers began to fade. The lion start chasing the lamb to eat the lamb. The whole world became broken because of sin. And some tried to fix this brokenness by going to parties, going to places where they are trying to, to get some sort of, of, of satisfaction within themselves. But the Bible is very clear that the wages of sin is death. If we continue in our sins without a savior, then it will be eternal death. The sin problem makes us wonder. What, what can we do with this sin problem? Some decide that they will try different things to get away from loneliness and get away from despair. So some try drugs, some try alcohol and cigarette smoking. As a matter of fact, here in England, the, 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 the alcohol and the cigarette the, the culture is so tremendous that even now the government is trying to tackle it. 
se sinkro fo anu ani ehu ni ehu na nsanu so ye ta ni ye to emane meme nyina ye wie we are living in what for i see youngsters from, from the from the lower age as, as 10 years old smoking na utimi hu se obi a wadi ben sem fi hiedu abofrem na I see teenagers of all description drinking alcohol in the parks. And every now and then you hear someone who was overdosed. Well, you know, since our problem is within, we need help from above. You see, you see, the New Age movement tries to tell us that we can solve our problems by looking inside of us. But the problem of sin is not only inside of us, it's all around us. And we do not have the ability to solve the problem of sin. We can't save ourselves. We need somebody, someone who is beyond and above us to help us. And so, right there in Genesis, as Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, Genesis 3.15, God gave the solution to them. And God said, I will put enmity or make a separation between you, Satan, and the woman, Eve. And between your offspring and hers, he, Jesus, shall bruise your head, and you, Satan, shall bruise his heel. In other words, the solution for sin is Jesus Christ. The solution for peace of mind is Jesus Christ. It is only Jesus Christ that can crush the serpent's head, that can crush the head of sin and liberate us. It is only Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that can take away the sins of this world. It is only Jesus Christ who can take our weakened state, take our bodies, take our entire souls and make us into what he wants us to be. It is only Jesus Christ that can take that, that, that beaten up body of yours, of mine, and make it whole. It is only Jesus Christ who can take our weaknesses and give us strength. The Israelites understood that it was Jesus Christ, the only one who can give forgiveness for sins. Not the Pope, not the priest, not the pastor, or the elder, or the church. Only Jesus Christ can give the solution for sin. And the lambs that were slain represented the blood of Jesus Christ that will finally be shed on the cross of Calvary for sin. So when an Israelite committed a sin, he or she brought a lamb and the lamb was slain and the blood from that lamb was sprinkled in the sanctuary and it represented the lamb of God who will soon come and take away the sins of the world. Now, Now, 
John the Baptist called it correctly when he saw Jesus walking towards him. He ah. says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It is this Lamb of God that I present to you as the solution to sin tonight. As the solution to despair. As the solution to loneliness. As the solution to weakness. As the solution to temptation. Revelation 1 5 says, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The song says there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners can plunge beneath the blood and lose all their guilty state. I'm happy tonight that I can plunge into the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ and lose all Amen. my guilty state. This Jesus I present to you is the lamb that is worthy, the lamb that was slain. This Jesus I present to you is the one who overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome through his blood and his blood alone. None of us can overcome our sins by ourselves. It does not matter how brilliant you are. Whether you have a master's degree, or a PhD. And that's a, a body be a yabo per head. It does not matter if you're a millionaire or you're a pauper. And that's a one crata na unibi. It does not matter if you're black or white. And fahun so it untumana fufu. Every single person, in order for him to be saved, needs the blood of Jesus Christ. To wash him from his sins. And to cleanse him from all unrighteousness. He is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. He is the everlasting gospel, the good news, the euangelon, the good news of salvation. The what and only good news of salvation. He is the one who holds the marriage supper. The he would ultimately invite everyone to when he comes again. He will preside over this magnificently huge table. With all the saints of God seated. It is he who will stand up and call the assembly to order. It is he who will drink and eat with us in the earth made new. Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God. It is he who gives the water of life freely. That whosoever come can drink. You know, I love Jesus. He's no respect of person. You know, when they do a census, they uh, ask you a questionnaire well, are you black African, black Caribbean, white this, or Asian? That? When they do, they just they ask you all of these things, but you know I love Jesus. Because Jesus takes everybody for just who they are. Amen. He is not concerned about color, race, or creed. Once you are a human being, Jesus loves you. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Once you're a human being, Jesus has died to save you. 
And every race and color and creed can come to the foot of the cross. And Now, there we are all one. We are all one at the foot of the cross. Here, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in Him. We shouldn't be the ones dying on the cross. We shouldn't be the ones nailed to the cross. But Jesus took our place there. That's why he has the right to save us. That's why only his blood can wash us. Only his blood can cleanse us from sin. Only his blood can redeem us. It does not matter who you are, where you have been or what. You are done. The blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you from all your sins. It does not matter if you're a murderer or a thief or whatever you have done. God is not concerned with what you have done. He is concerned with your future. Somebody say He is concerned with your present. He is concerned with your future. He is concerned with giving you eternal life in Jesus Christ. Yes, Christ. Come to the foot of the cross and he will save you. No, I beg you. You know, one day he was there in the Garden of Gethsemane. That could be now or war Gethsemane through And he had a choice in Gethsemane. Now Gethsemane nanko beti mi a pao and yeme mi enumbak. The choice was between two alternatives of yourself. Now yeme mi enum beti mi a pao mubak. Just pack up everything and go back. To his father in heaven. Why bother with us? Worms of the earth. Why bother with us ungrateful people? He knew that we would crucify him. He knew that we would kill him. He knew that millions, yeah, billions will reject him. Now in him saying, Paul, in Crow, where we be a puno. So he could have gone back and can know better me a sarcos and forgotten about everything. Leave us to grow old and die in our sins. And pass and go better me a jammy. Leave us to live in despair without hope. And go better me a mea coavira and in that so. Leave us to be eaten by loneliness. And can know better me a jay and by sin. And crank cry and contact cry and a high. But he made the choice. Then so a power. He chose to stay and die for every one of us because he loves us and he cares for us and he wants to save every single person in this world. That's the Jesus I serve. And that's why today everyone who has the opportunity can come to the foot of the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my son. And now I'm happy for the day. Oh, praise God for the cross. Praise the Lord. The cross of Jesus Christ. Yes, you are saying we are. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. Now, if it's a fun man, a team, and a man, 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 and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of any works. Lest anyone should boast. This salvation I'm bringing to you tonight in Jesus Christ is a gift. When you receive a gift, you don't do anything for the gift. You don't even know maybe sometimes the origin of the gift. You just accept the gift. And Jesus is giving us the gift of his life tonight. He has given us the gift of his salvation. All we have to do is to accept that gift. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. 
Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So how can we find peace of mind in this turbulent world? How can we find peace of mind in this sinful world? How can we find peace of mind in this despairing world? Where there is panic everywhere. People's hearts are failing them. People don't know where they will get the next meal from. How can we find peace of mind? Well, the first thing that all of us need to do to find peace of mind is to accept. First of all, we need to accept that we can't help ourselves. We have to accept that this is bigger than us. That this situation is beyond us. And that we are helpless. And then we have to accept that we are sinners. The Bible says for all, how many? Have all have sinned and fallen short of the glory Lord of God. The first step to getting peace of mind, the, the first step to seeing God's face, the first step to building a relationship with God is to accept that we are sinners and we need God. To accept that all of us have sinned. You have sinned. I have sinned. Every single human being has sinned. There is none that is infallible. All have sinned. And we need to accept that fact. You see, Accepting that fact is like you're being when you're being taught in school. And the mathematics problem is on the board. And you can do two things. Because you know that you don't understand the problem. And when the teacher asks the question, do you understand? You can be shy and say like everybody else, I understand this. But you know you don't understand. And if you continue that way, you will fail when the exams come. Or you can be honest and say, Miss, I don't understand. I need explanation. I need help. No, I mean, and my plea to us tonight, first of all, is for us to accept that we all need help Amen. because we all have sinned. And we are all fallen short of God's will. The next step to find peace of mind is to believe. Believe that there is help in Jesus Christ. Believe that there is hope in Jesus Christ. For the Bible simply says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Amen. Somebody say amen. Because I can't deal with my sin. I cannot deal with my weakness. I can't deal with my despair. But I know someone who can deal with it. And that someone is Jesus Christ. And that someone is not concerned with what I have done. 
He is not concerned with the crimes I've committed. He's not concerned with the adultery I've committed. He's not concerned with the fornication I've committed. What he wants to do is to take all my dark sins and cast them into the depths of the sea. He wants to clean me up. And make me into what he wants me to be. So I can go and sin no more. I can go in the power of God. The power of the Holy Spirit. And live above sin. Somebody say Live above sin in the power of God. Believe that Jesus Christ can do this for you. Did you say Jesus Christ can do this for you? The next step to peace of mind is that I need to confess. Now I can play like a Pharisee and say, Well, Lord, there is no sin within me. I am not like this in terms he is a sinner. I am righteous before you, God. Well, if you are like that, you have already, you're, you're sitting right now because you're telling a lie. We need to confess, Lord, that we have not been all that we ought to be. Said the okay, what say yeah, no, yeah, yeah. The answer say yeah, yeah. That we have sinned. Yeah, yeah. For if we confess our sins, see a pem can and bonia. He is faithful and just to oh, forgive for any our sins. So the embony. Oh thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. If we confess our sins, if we tell God what we have done, if we tell God that secret that we have been holding back that nobody knows about, but we can tell God because God keeps a secret. Somebody say man. God keeps every secret that has been told to him. He does not tell anybody. He will not expose your dark secret. If we confess our sins, the Bible says that God is faithful and just to forgive our sins. Yes, the lie. Yes, the adultery. Yes, the fornication. Yes, every single thing that we have done. Get on your knees and tell to God tonight. Tell him. The Bible says that he is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know what I like about God, Elder Isaac, <laughs> is that he does not only say that we should confess our sins to him, but he also forgives our sins. And he does not only forgive our yes, sins, but he washes us and makes us clean. Hallelujah, somebody amen. say amen. Praise the Lord. He washes us and, and makes us clean. He gives us his righteousness. He takes us as his child. And he makes us holy. I thank God Praise for his forgiveness so we should not only if we want to find peace of mind in this troubled world we should not only accept that we are sinners we should not only believe that God can do something for us we must not only confess that we have sinned and the sins that we have sinned but we must also decide we must decide and what must we decide? We must decide that we indeed want to live for God. That we want to live above sin. Revelation 3.20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he says, 
I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. It's a personal invitation. It's a personal welcome. It's the personal availability of God, of Jesus Christ. To come into our hearts, to come into our lives, and to be there to sup with us, to eat with us, us, to be a part of our lives. He also says, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So, so Jesus does not only say I'm going to come in with you but he says if you repent if you confess I'm not only going to come in with you but I'm going to blot your sins out you know there are some people who always like to bring up your sins there are people who always like to remember what you did when God is not like that once you accept him as your Lord and Savior, he blots your sins up. When we receive Jesus, we receive the gift of eternal life. We receive the gift of eternal life. 1 John 5, 12 and 13 says, He that had the Son hath life. And he that had not the Son of God had not life. These things, he says, I have written unto you that believe on the name of Jesus, on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is a healing in the name of Jesus. There is eternal life also in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If we believe on the Lord See, Jesus, you know, dear. we shall be saved. In believing also and in deciding, for some of us who have not done it already, there is something else that we have to do in that decision-making process. And in that decision-making process, it now, also involves baptism. And pastor, you see, one night, Anajubi. Nicodemus, Nicodemo. a great teacher of or the no, Lord, no, a man any. who believed in Jesus secretly, no, no, but for fear of the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees no, and the scribes, no, 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 decided that he would have a personal conversation with Jesus one night. Jesus knowing that he, Nicodemus, wanted to meet him, avail himself to meet Nicodemus. You see, whenever we want Jesus, he avails himself to meet us. Whenever we need Jesus, he is always there. He needs, all he needs, the only invitation that he needs is a desire for him. And he reads our hearts and he's there for us. And so G Nicodemus was concerned about his salvation. Nicodemus was concerned that there was something else that he needed to do to be saved. And, and so he, he asked the great teacher. He asked the Savior. He asked the Messiah. He asked Jesus Christ the Christ. He asked the Son of God. He asked the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He asked the I am that I am. What must I do? He said. I can have eternal life. 
and the one who existed before time as a matter of fact the one who created time the one who existed before creation was ever talked about the I am that I am Jesus Christ son of God and God he said to Nicodemus he says I tell you the truth no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and of the spirit of God. In other words, nobody could be saved except they be baptized by immersion in water and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus answers the question directly. Mark further reiterates it by saying in Mark 16, 16, whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. Will be saved. Now I, I, if I, I, I want to go to heaven and so since I want to go to heaven, I will want to do what Jesus did because Jesus is the one who will take us to heaven. Jesus is the one who will who died for us, rose again, ascended to heaven, and he's coming back for us. And so I want to do whatever he did. If he says that I should do something, I'm going to do it. So Jesus Christ himself was baptized. John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ, was in the Judean wilderness baptizing. Matthew chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 records this very poignant moment in history. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan confessing their sins. And then Jesus Christ himself came to be baptized. And John protested, he said, no Lord, you should baptize me instead. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. You are God Himself. You should baptize me. Now John can say the Bible. We cry now as our brothers. If we say we know what you found, who anyone you may go my way, you ask one in court. We cry me here to be free. And Jesus said to John, "No, you do it." And it it writes there, "Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this." To fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. In other words, Jesus was saying, in order for us to be saved, in order for us to have salvation, I am laying down an example today for all to follow. So everyone who desires salvation must be baptized. And when Jesus was finished baptizing, he went out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open and he saw the Spirit of God. Descending like a dove and lighting on him. He, Jesus, had told Nicodemus that in order for us to be saved, we were not only supposed to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but there are a couple of other things that we needed to do, and one nah, of those was to be baptized. And he said we should be born of water and of the Spirit. Here we see Jesus being born of water. And the Spirit of God descending upon him. And then a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. Jesus didn't need this. 
Yes, no he had no sin. Never committed any sin. Never, never did anything wrong. Never, never committed any form of sin whatsoever. He was sinless and righteous. But he did this so we can follow his example. And every person who follows his example, the voice will symbolically roll from heaven saying, this this is my son. This is my daughter. Whom, in whom I'm well pleased. You know, when you decide to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and even those of us who have accepted him already, the devil will try his best to always bring up us past sin. The devil will always look, try to get you to look back to say, oh, oh, you know, I used to do this. Or, or, or somebody will always come by and say, oh, you, what, what are you playing now? You know? I remember the days when you used to be raving and, and smoking and partying and, and doing drugs and, and so the story is told of, of, of Martin Luther and Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King Jr. but the Martin Luther who uh, was the one who nailed the 95 theses and, Martin and Luther left the, the reformers Martin Luther the reformer he, he had a dream uh, the, that he was trying his best to live for Christ. But everywhere he turned, the devil was showing him his sins. So everywhere he turned, he saw cheating. Lying, unclean thoughts, fornicating. He saw all these things, and yet he was trying to live for Jesus. But then, as he continued to look at the list that the devil had, the devil had his hand over the top of the list. And all he could see was this list of things that, 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 that sins that he had committed. Duties neglected. Time wasted, cheating, lies, unclean thoughts. And he wondered what was the devil hiding? Why did the devil have his hand there all the time? And all that he could see was just these things that he had done. And he said, in the name of Jesus, move your hand from there. And the devil moved his hand. And when he moved his hand, he saw this written, the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, Christ cleanses Martin Luther from all his sins. You put your name in there. And it will read the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ. Cleanses Kirk Thomas from and all his sins. If your name is Anita, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses Anita from all her sins. And some of you have some really fancy names that I can't call. You call your name and say the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all your sins. The devil will always try to bring up your sins. And Pastor Yankupon. But the blood of Jesus Christ yes, has cleansed us from all our sins. And how did he do this? 
Well, he was there in Pilate's judgment hall. They had grabbed him, dragged him from the Garden of Gethsemane. His disciples had fled. He was left alone. Now he's there in Pilate's judgment hall. And the soldiers are mocking him. They're slapping him. They're spitting upon him. They're ramming a crown of thorns into his head. They're scourging him with the cat or nine tail. And this cat or nine tail was a whip with nine sprangs. And, and at the end of each sprang they had the uh, pieces of bone and, 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 and wood or metal tied into the end so that when you got the lashes it took flesh from your body. He had gotten that 39 times twice. There was blood all over the place. And that was not enough. They then dragged him up the hill called Calvary. His cross was so heavy for him that Simon of Cyrene, a black man, helped him and up the cross of the, with a cross of Calvary's hill. Simon, Sarini, Tintumbi, there was blood all over the place. Then they nailed him to the cross. Crucifixion was the most cruel uh, form of punishment in those days. A description of crucifixion will show that these, the, 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 the weight was on these hands. And on the feet that were nailed to the post. And in order for you to breathe, you had to keep suspend your weight between these hands and the feet. The minute you slumped, you begin to crush your lungs. You begin to suffocate. And you will eventually die from excruciating pain. But you know what? He did it. For you. And for me. And his blood today still streaks across the skies. Right down into this place here tonight. Right into Tooting to still wash all of us from our sins. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's name and sinners like you and I can plunge beneath that blood and lose all our sins. He did it. It is there recorded the greatest text ever written. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have in the Question I ask tonight is, as we come said, to a close, what more can Jesus Christ do for us? And the answer comes back 
through the annals of time to this present moment and beyond. Nothing. He has done every single thing for all of us to be saved in God's eternal kingdom. And so the question tonight is what would you do with Jesus Christ? No one ought to be lonely anymore in this world because Jesus is here. No one needs to be lost because Jesus is here. Salvation has been assured by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have to decide what you will do. I want to accept him again and make him part of my life. What about you? Do you want to do that tonight? Do you want to raise your hands and say, I, I, I want to accept Jesus Christ again. So that I can be saved in his And if you have not yet accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you can also put your hand up and say, I, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So I can be saved. You know, I spoke tonight about baptism. That step into salvation. At the end of this series of meetings, we'll have a baptismal service. And I will give every single person an opportunity who are not yet baptized to be a part, to be a part of that service. But I will give you an opportunity again to be part of that service. But tonight, I want to pray with all of us here. Everyone. I want to pray with you and to thank God for the salvation that he offers in Jesus Christ. If you like to pray with me, why don't you join me at the altar? And let's hold hands together. And let's pray and thank God for the salvation that he offers in Jesus Christ. Let us hold hands, stretch out our hands wherever we are as we pray. A prayer of thanksgiving for the, the salvation that Jesus Christ has offered to us by his blood. I'm sure we all want to be saved in God's eternal kingdom. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are so happy tonight for the salvation that is offered in Jesus Christ. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, Lord, you could have allowed us to be doomed to just have an endless cycle of, of life and death, disease and suffering, with no hope of eternal life. But there and then, you promise them the Savior Jesus Christ will come. The Lamb of God that will come and take away the sins of this world, of every last human being, before final destruction falls upon this universe. We are happy, Lord, that the promise was fulfilled. <coughs> For Matthew chapter 1 bears record that a son was born to Mary, not conceived with human sperm and human egg, 
but planted through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. The Son of God condescended, made himself into a baby to save us from our sins. And just as that happened, Lord, we know that he will come again to save us from the clutches of sin and the sinfulness of this world. And so tonight we celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ and his salvation is real. Amen. We celebrate the fact tonight, Lord, that all of us have the opportunity to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. We celebrate the fact that he has gone to prepare a place for us, that he will come again for us and to save us from sin and this world forever and forever. I pray tonight that for all of us holding hands here at the altar and in this church, that this salvation will be real and personal. I pray, oh God, that every one of us will have a personal experience with Jesus Christ tonight. When we leave this place tonight, oh God, I pray that we will find a quiet place by our bedside, in our closet, in our homes, in our cars, wherever there is a quiet place, and we will get to know Jesus Christ again. And for those of us who don't know him, I pray, oh God, that a new chapter will be opened in our lives. Amen. That this man from Galilee, the one who comes with healing in his wings and salvation full and free, will be ours for time and eternity. So I pray, Father, that you will hold us close to you, bathe us with your salvation, wash us in your blood, forgive us of every sin that we have committed. And should you come tonight or should you call us in death, I pray that we will be saved in your eternal kingdom. I pray, Father, as we go, you will give us safe traveling mercies and you will continue to bless us you will continue to bring us out to these meetings and help us to invite someone, some loved one, some friend to hear this wonderful message. And those, oh God, who are not yet baptized, I pray that when the call is made, at the end of these meetings, that they will say yes to Jesus and be baptized, knowing that their salvation will be complete in Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.